talk about war in the Middle East. All the king's horses and all the king's men are screaming about the idea that President Trump wants to send or bring home the 2,000 so troops or so troops in Syria that are currently based there. Now, of course, the first question I have is how many Americans knew there were troops in Syria before President Trump announced he was bringing them home? How many, how many Americans knew there were troops there? And even more importantly, how many Americans knew what their goal and their mission is? And I guarantee you, not too many, and I guarantee you, just as few commentators and politicians criticizing the president for wanting to do what he's generally promised, is to pull back the U.S. from these endless wars that don't protect our national security by his lights. They didn't know what was going on there in Syria either. And I guarantee you, if, if Trump was trying to increase troops in Syria, they'd probably oppose him. He tries to pull him out, they're going to oppose him. But you know, I have the facts on Syria here that you may not know about. And I've talked about it before, I think, on our prior updates. But this is material that was released by Judicial Watch before we started doing these weekly updates back in uh, 2015. And they were uncovered as a result of our Benghazi litigation. Oh yes, Benghazi is tied to Syria and the rise of ISIS. And in perhaps some of the most important documents that Judicial Watch has ever uncovered, and I don't say that lightly. Judicial Watch will be, I think we're uh, in our 25th year of operation next year. So these documents are real important. They show two things. Uh, they show that the Obama administration was well aware that arms were going to Syria, the conflict in Syria, out of Benghazi. And secondly, they show that uh, the Obama administration, including the Secretary of State, were warned about the rise of ISIS and that they were supporting terrorists in the uh, interseam warfare in Syria. And specifically, the documents detail the arms being shipped out of Syria in unbelievable detail. As we say, the DOD documents contain the first official documentation that the Obama administration knew that weapons were being shipped from the port of Benghazi to rebel troops in Syria. An October 2012 report, this is a report a month after the terrorist attack on our uh, special mission compound that Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama all lied about. Weapons from the former Libya military stockpiles were shipped from the port of Benghazi, Libya to the port of Benias and the port of Borja Islam, Syria. The weapons shipped from late, the ship, uh, excuse me, the weapons shipped during late 2012 uh, were sniper rifles, rifles, RPGs, and 125 millimeter and 155 millimeter howitzer missiles. During the immediate aftermath of and following the uncertainty caused by the downfall of the Gaddafi regime, remember, Gaddafi was murdered with the approval of Obama and Hillary. They wanted that regime to fall. In October 2011 and up until early September 2012, weapons from the former Libya military stockpiles located in Benghazi, Libya, were shipped from the port of Benghazi, Libya to the ports of Benias and the port of Borj, Islam, Syria. The Syrian ports were ch chosen due to the small amounts of cargo traffic transiting these two ports. The ships used to transport the weapons were medium-sized and able to hold 10 or less shipping containers or cargo. And this is a Defense Intelligence Agency document. Uh, by the way, you know who ran the DIA and issued this report? It was General Flynn. No wonder Obama didn't like him. The weapons shipped from Syria during late August 2012, uh, I said where I, I described the weapons, the nu and they get into the numbers. The numbers for each weapon were estimated to be 500 sniper rifles, 100 RPG launchers with 300 total rounds, and approximately 400 Harwitzer missiles. In fact, I think it was in this document, they were able to describe the rooms in which they were stored. So what's unclear about this document is who was doing the shipping. Because many have alleged it was done with US Obama administration support. 
Certainly the level of detail suggests that they were in a position to stop it in the least. But we'll see. Just wish someone would ask some questions on that, huh? Another DIA report shows that in August 2012, the same period, the U.S. was monitoring weapon flows from Benghazi to Syria. This report said the opposition in Syria was driven by al-Qaeda and other extremist Muslim groups. The grown sectarian direction of the war was predicted to have dire consequences for Iraq, which included the grave danger of the rise of ISIS. According to the document, this creates the ideal atmosphere for AQI, Al-Qaeda Iraq, to return to its old pockets in Mosul and Ramadi and provide a renewed momentum under the presumption of unifying the Jihad among Sunni, Iraq, and Syria, and the rest of the Sunnis in the Arab world against what it considers one enemy, the dissenters. ISI. Yes, that's the precursor to ISIS could also declare an Islamic state through its union with other terrorist organizations in Iraq and Syria, which will create grave danger in regards to unifying Iraq and the protection of its territory. And one of the warnings was heavily blacked out. One such consequence would be the renewed facili facilitation of terrorist elements from all over the Arab world entering into the Iraqi arena. The DIA document demonstrates that the insurgency in Syria were, the major elements of the insurgency in Syria were AQI, the Muslim Brotherhood, a terrorist organization, and the Salafist, it's extremist Muslims as well. The West, Gulf countries, and Turkey support the opposition. So you were supporting the opposition. AQI. So these terrorists were supporting the Assyrian opposition from the beginning, and the West was supporting them through Benghazi. That's how I read all of this. So what was going on is that there was this pullback of government forces at the border of Iraq and Syria. And into the, into the, into the chaos there, unpatrolled borders, see, when your border's out of control, things happen. ISIS crept in and asserted itself. AQI asserted itself. All predicted. This is what has been wrought or was wrought by the Obama administration and it led to all these refugee flows that we now hear about and is what Trump has had to deal with since he's come into office. So the reason we're in Syria is because of Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton allowing the destruction of Libya by extremist radical forces and it was a vehicle to get arms into Syria to increase pressure on the regime through terrorists. AQI. It's that time of day for the trains, excuse me. So, you know, I, I put this document, we'll put the link to this document in our materials here, but you've got you to educate yourself on this because the media is not going to talk to you about Syria. So now we're going to hear all these armchair experts say why we need to be in Syria, and I, you know, I, I don't want to get into that debate here. You can imagine what I think. So, um, the truth is out there for those of you who want to find it, and it's because Judicial Watch is doing the work to get it for you. And as I said, this is critically important information. It confirms the downfall of Libya, led to the rise of ISIS, and it shows that arms were going into Syria out of Libya, and the Obama administration knew about it and didn't do anything to stop it.